All right, what's up, y'all? I figured you'd want to get into what Kit Harrington just said in GQ. Let's talk about it. All right, so Kit Harrington was featured in GQ UK. Much of the article discussed his journey with sobriety, parenting, all of that. It was a really good read. As usual, check the link in my description for the full article. But the part that we're going to focus on is where he discusses the ending of Game of Thrones as well as what happened with the Jon Snow spinoff. Now, real quick, earlier in the article, he said, I went in and everyone loved Thrones. I came out and everyone hated it. I thought, what the F is going on? And my thing will always be, it was no shade to the actors, or at least it should have never been no shade to the actors, to, I mean, the VFX people, to, you know, anybody else. I don't care if you're a cameraman. I don't care whatever. Like, y'all did what you had to do. It was just them writers. I promise you. So it just sucks that, like, as the as the face of the show, you're going to get those fans who are just going to direct all that hatred to you when you walk out, especially if you're, you know, you're the actor who plays Jon Snow. That must have been so crazy to experience, right? So this is a part of the article I really wanted to talk about. One of the strangest TV news stories of recent years was that Kit Harington is planning a Game of Thrones spinoff show called Snow. It was strange because of all the cast members, Harrington seemed the one most desperate to move on. Maybe it was the hunk stuff. Maybe it was the endless memes like pouty Jon Snow and people asking for autographs, which he had to start refusing or shouting, you know nothing at him in the street. Like, I can't imagine. (laughs) I cannot imagine walking around and just randomly everywhere you go, you know nothing. You know nothing. Screaming at you from across. You know nothing. I would be like, y'all, okay. That's that's, (laughs) okay. I get it. You could just say, hey, would you like, (laughs) can I take a picture? Like, something like that, girl, just screaming in his face, not even saying hello. What's wrong with y'all? Maybe it was the fact uh, that he had to keep his hair the subject of endless online how-to tutorials the same for eight long years. Whatever it was, watching the media circus around Thrones in 2019, it was clear Harrington was over it. He said, I think if there was any fault with the end of Thrones is that we were all so effing tired. We couldn't have gone on longer. And so I understand some people thought it was rushed and I might agree with them, but I'm not sure there was any alternative. I look at pictures of me in that final season and I look exhausted. I look spent. I didn't have another season in me. And the backlash to the final episode specifically, he says, everyone is entitled to their opinion. I think there were mistakes made story-wise. I mean, (laughs) to say the least, honey. (laughs) To say the least. I think there were mistakes made story-wise toward the end, maybe. I think there were some interesting choices that didn't quite work. And I thought that was such a very delicate way to put it. (laughs) Yeah, because... How else do you say it really sucked? We saw y'all react to that at the script read, honey. We saw we saw y'all react to that. It was a mess. We know it was a mess. We saw y'all try to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for the final season on these red carpets. We saw y'all react to it. So him putting it that way is really the most delicate he could have ever put it because it was trash. <laughs> That's That's what I would really want to say. Like, girl, that was trash. But also, like I said, like I mentioned before, I can't imagine being an actor and be like, well, I'm still going to get my check. Like, what do you mean? Y'all could be mad about the writing, but I I still, I'm still going to set. I'm still getting my check. Like agreeing with the fans that the script was horrible, but being like, well, I still signed the contract. I'm still going to get my coin. I'm, I, I still have to play the part, which is why sometimes, I mean, these, some of these fans, Game of Thrones fans, Star Wars fans, fantasy fans, can't separate reality from, you know, fiction as it is. So I know that they are not, like, assessing the nuance of, hey, I didn't like the storyline, so my issue, my beef is with the writers and not with the actors. So I, I can only imagine the types of things that the actors have had to go through or hear while they're out in public from some of these idiotic fans, sorry, you know? 
Um, earlier this year, Harrington confirmed Snow had been shelved. And what was the storyline going to be anyway? Jon Snow living out his retirement in hard home, perhaps lured back to King's Landing on a doomed mission to become Bran's Hand of the King. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kill it with fire. <laughs> Kill these storylines with fire. Kill it with fire. <laughs> Absolutely not. And then Harrington makes the smart decision. He makes the smart choice to say, I really don't want to say. I think that's so smart because if he said it, we would be here right now. I promise you I would be here right now. We would be going through the storylines like, oh my gosh, I like this one. I don't like this one. I, I think this one could have worked. We would have been, we been here. We would be here. So Harrington smartly says, I don't really want to say um, because it starts a whole thing. Like, he's right. He's right. It def we will be up here. I promise you. He said, what I can tell you is it was HBO that came to me and said, would you consider this? My first reaction was no. And then I thought there could be an interesting and important story about the soldier after the war. I felt that there might be something left to say and a story left to tell in a pretty limited way. So, I mean, from this perspective, I can see why he, you know thought to explore it like okay well maybe we can say something short and sweet about a guy who has been through war and all this and love and all this stuff like i i get it from that perspective um or like i get trying to search for something from for from that perspective right um he said we spent a couple years back and forth developing it and it just didn't nothing it got us excited enough. In the end, I kind of backed out and said, I think if we push this any further and keep developing it, we could end up with something that's not good. And that's the last thing we all want. And so like, I get it, right? Like I get searching for it. Oh, maybe we could say something. Maybe we could do something and finish it off. But and especially because HBO is the one coming to you, like your boss is coming to you saying, hey, do you want to try for something? Like I get it. Um, but I also think it was very smart of him to be like, we probably going to push this <laughs> to places that we do not want this to go. Like the story's not exciting enough. It, the fans are, some of the fans already hate Jon Snow because he, he even did what he did to Daenerys. I mean, it, the, Jon Snow's, the writing was already tired from season eight. It's just, let's just, let's just wrap it up. I think it was smart of him to just be like, all right, enough is enough. Uh, we, we didn't try it. We tried nothing got us up there and that's it. Like, I think it's smart because they could have really made things so much worse. <laughs> like I promised you, like even some of the prequels can be on shaky ground sometimes, especially now <laughs> with the ending that we just got with Game of Thrones. So if even those shows might have some hoops to jump through because of the annoying writing of season eight, then I can only imagine what Kit Harrington was trying to navigate, trying to create some story for Jon Snow at the end. But like, I don't know. I think Kit made some smart decisions in this article by not telling us what they was talking about because we would be here all day. <laughs> and also by backing out just to just, just leave it alone. Like that's the best decision at this point. <laughs> the article says, I wonder whether there was a strange comfort in keeping a line to Jon Snow alive, even just as a theory, a concept. Uh, it must have been a tough decision emotionally to know whether to go back or to move on. And Kit said, yeah, there's a lot of baggage that goes with it. And I think that was part of the problem. In some ways, you need to divorce completely from this previous thing. And we're only a few years after it. The role will always be just such a significant factor in my life. Um, it might be the biggest, most important piece of work I do. I met my wife on it, kids from it, have some lifelong friends from it. I'm recognized in the street because of it. But it was also working against what I'm trying to do, which is separate myself from the show by still being with it. It would be very hard to ask people to see you as something else, which is true. Like it's already the case right now. No shade. Like, <laughs> and it's kind of essential uh, to do my job for people to come and see me and not see Jon Snow. For now, Snow looks unlikely to be revived. The same can be said for Harrington's brief venture into the MCU in 2021 with Eternals, which saw a planned sequel reportedly canned following an 
underwhelming box office performance. Y'all did not deserve Eternals. I cannot believe y'all let it flop like that. I'm so mad at y'all. Now listen to how Kit shades the MCU a little bit here. Um... He said, I'm not going to pretend I took that role because it was different and interesting. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but he said, but if if Marvel calls, you got to do it. Uh, although he liked his character and would be interested to return if they changed their mind. Um, uh, uh, Kit Harrington said, yo, a check is still a check after that. <laughs> At the end of the day, a check is still a check and your girl's got to work. So stop playing with me. But yeah, I thought y'all would think this was cool. This was interesting. It's always fun to hear from like the actors, the people who had to deal with deal with all of this, right? About the end of Game of Thrones. And pretty much what I got from the article is it's exactly what we thought it was. At, at the end of it, everybody was tired. They were over it. They wanted this, they wanted it to end, girl. And then for Snow, um, they just couldn't find a story and they didn't want to make things worse. Uh, re- like, well played, y'all. I think that was the best choice you could have made. And Kit said, love y'all so much, but I'm on to other roles. I still got bills to pay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. He's like, I'm sober. I'm parenting. I'm living my life. I'm chilling. I'm trying to expand my horizons. Love y'all so much. Shout out to everybody. I had fun, but um, I am leaving Westeros. <laughs> That's it. On that note, thank y'all so much for watching. Make sure you check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash avatar Adrian for exclusive content. Love y'all so much and I'll catch y'all later. Peace. All right, y'all, make sure that you're going to www.zaraxia.com. When you join the wait list there on the site, you will be the first to be notified when I drop my sequel. Also, you'll immediately get chapter one of my upcoming sequel of the upcoming book. Uh, sent to your email as a PDF. So check that out. Also, this is a different excerpt uh, from my upcoming book. So you definitely want to pause to read if you're trying to get your life. Uh, Keep in mind that this upcoming book, the sequel, is following up the first book that is already released called Xeraxia Wrath of the God King. Um, I released it a couple years ago, a few years ago. It was my Really, it was my introduction to writing uh, fantasy and stuff. So just go easy on me. But either way, as you can see here, it's giving 4.9 stars. It's giving 4.9 stars. So yeah, check out Xeraxia Wrath of the God King. While you wait for Xeraxia, the vengeance of cold wind, right? And go to Xeraxia.com, sign up, join the wait list, get your free chapter. Thank you so much.